Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days. Well, today's video, day 10, is going to take us to the 1st of April. Can you believe that? And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with its GFS and ECM ensembles because they ran around a couple of weeks. And we're going to have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that the videos at the moment are not being released as regularly as they normally would be. That's because I am going through a health uh, dilemma, a health drama, a health crisis, <laughs> maybe. So uh, I've got a small cancer in my mouth that's got to be uh, removed, and that's going to be happening next week, along with a neck dissection on Monday. Got all of that to look <laughs> forward to, haven't I? Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, some people have holidays and, and, and uh, parties and things to look forward to. I've got uh, a mouth cancer removed and a neck dissection to look forward to, but never mind, never mind, these things happen, don't they? So, um, so yeah, that's the reason, anyway, uh, this week I'm sort of in the preparing phase for the operation, so there's a lot going on here at the towers as I get everything sorted out and, uh, and whatnot, so, uh, so, uh, I'll just release the videos when I can, you know, and from next week, of course, the videos will stop, uh, for a while as I have my surgery and then come home and, uh, recover from that surgery. So uh, that's what's going on. If anyone was wondering, didn't know, you know, that's what's happening. And uh, and so that's the reason that videos aren't being uh, released as regularly as normal. <coughs> Excuse me, as normal. I hope everybody will bear with me uh, with uh, with this in this difficult time. So uh, I want to say thank you so much to all of you for your lovely, lovely messages, uh, both here at Gas of You's channel and also on my personal vlog channel, where I am sort of vlogging about this experience of having uh, mouth cancer. I want to say thank you so much, you know, to all of you for... for um, uh, the lovely messages that you're sending, not just uh, on YouTube, but, you know, emailing me and uh, uh, messaging me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, well, however you communicate with me. Um, just thank you so much. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for those lovely, lovely messages that you are uh, sending all of the time. And you are very, very kind. You're lovely, lovely people. And uh, just a big thank you. Thank you, thank you. And it does help. You know, it helps, helps uh, spur you on, makes you more determined to, uh, to, to, to beat this. And as I've been saying, we are going to beat cancer. Uh, together, we definitely will do. Thank you so much for the lovely live stream that we did on Sunday. Uh, as well, I wasn't sure whether to just leave the videos really now and and let that be be, be you know the end for now really because it was such a nice live stream. It wasn't a lot more to say, but I thought I will still do like a couple of videos for you uh, this week. But if you have not seen the live stream with Dan Sunny, then please have a look back at it. Gaz's final live stream for now, um, and it was a lovely, lovely hour and twenty minutes, and uh, we had a great time. Uh, you know, we had some laughs, uh, we had some tears. It was a lovely 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 evening thank you so much everybody for making it uh, so very very special and as i said at the end of that live stream i will be back live streaming uh soon i do not know when it will happen but i will be back uh live streaming uh and and doing all of the content that you all love so so that's my promise to all of you for the support that you're giving to me thank you so much Right, we're going to start off uh, with what's happening in the stratosphere then. So, stratospheric warming is still a okay. coma. South temperature current looking at 10 HPA over the North Pole, set against the average, which, of course, is the grey line uh, just here. So, we're uh, around minus 27, minus 28, something like that now, at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. If we go a little bit lower down, to 30 HPA warming there, also taking place uh, very dramatically, so actually, this is like getting to sudden stratospheric warming type levels, actually, at 30 HPA when the black line is lifting up uh, that far. So a very, very significant warming of the stratosphere at 30 HPA and, and, and a significant warming at 10 HPA as well. This is going to continue for the time being, so the warming is over Siberia at its core, but has infiltrated, has penetrated into the uh, Arctic and the North Pole. Uh, from Siberia. We just keep those yellow colours going there over the top of the pole right way through, uh, you know, right way through into the extended range uh, as well. There's no sign of a reformation of the polar vortex. So the polar vortex, which is cold temperatures in the stratosphere, you know, it's the roots of the polar vortex. That looks like it's pretty much done. Zona winds have now gone into reverse as well. This is from weatheriscool.com. It's depicting, um, you know, this is the strength of zona winds. And zona winds are kind of like the, the energy that polar vortex is emitting. So for most of the winds, we had a very strong uh, zona wind, as we see there 
with blue line. At times, it was record-breakingly strong. Um, we had a reduction of the strength of Zona Wings uh, early in March. Tried to re-strengthen for a while, but this latest warming has now sent Zona Wings into reverse. We have, in fact, recording, recorded a reversal of Zona Wings. We're now down there. And uh, it looks like Zona Wings are probably going to stay in reverse at 10 HP in the stratosphere. For the rest of March, and don't not much sign of recovering into April either. This tells us that the polar vortex is done, at least in a stratospheric level. The polar vortex is uh, is finished. Again, we see from the University of Berlin that uh, at 10 HP, which is this blue line, we have now gone into reverse with zona wings and zona wings predicted to stay in reverse over the. Uh, next week, 10 days as well. The red line, which is the zone of wind at 30 HPA, that is nearing by days, uh, sort of 9 and 10 anyway, nearing a reversal as well. So we may well get reversal of zone of winds at not only 10 HPA, but also at 30 HPA. It's all pointed about fact this year's polar vortex is done, it's finished, and uh, and we wait to see if we get a chopper spirit response. We may see a few signs of that. There's some model output at the moment. More about that in a uh, at the minute. More about we may let's do that again. We may see signs of a chopper spirit response uh, within some model output uh, at the minute, and more about that in a moment. <laughs> right. Okay. Central England temperature. Oh, where's my highlight about this? Central temperature is currently standing at 7.3, which is 1.9 degrees above average. Very mild March, following on from the very mild February. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, for the next couple of weeks. So uh, the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off above average at the moment, and we can say that way for the next week, but around the end of the month into the start of April, there is a sign of quite a significant reduction in the upper air temperatures, and we may actually get some really quite cold um, uh, on some of well, We have got some really quite cold on some of them as appearing. Some, some of those on some of the members going down as low as minus 10 at 850 HPA for a few days around the turn of the month. They're outliers, so it may not get that cold, but um, definite signs of a cooling trend anyway. Cold snap appearing there around the turn of the month. Quite a quick recovery in the temperature, though, of red temperature as we go through the first week of April. We can also see there's going to be a lot of dry weather over the next week or so as well. And then around the turn of the month, into the first week of April, it gets significantly more unsettled. So colder and wetter, really, for the beginning of April. And then probably going into a milder, wetter-type pattern. Temperature anomalies, but same significant different what we've got at the moment, let's put it that way. Temperature anomalies from the 22nd of March to the 30th, coming out above average precipitation anomalies from the 22nd of March to the 30th coming out drier than normal. The latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net is pulling winds up from a southerly or southeasterly direction and so that's the reason we have yet again a taste of spring today. Right, so this Avalanche UK Met Euro run is looking for midnight on Friday under a big area of high pressure then. High pressure sits around the country into the weekend as well and on into the start of next week. It's not until Tuesday when the high pressure begins to start showing a little bit of a sign of uh, retrogression, or should I say retrogression. Uh, I can't roll my ass up towards Greenland and Iceland, and that might start to set up a cold northerly around the beginning of April. We'll have to wait and see. So Icon looks again, high pressure dominates the weather uh, through the end of the week and into the weekend. Only next week that high pressure begins to scoot northwards up towards Greenland and Iceland. We'll be dropping a cold northerly. Not quite. The cold air is plunging down in Scandinavia and northern Europe with that. We're just on the edges, just on the periphery of it, but looking quite blocked there around the 29th of March. If we get that high pressure any further north, we will start to pull in those cold north or northeasterly winds. It's our GFS midnight rain. So again, high pressure will dominate the weather through the rest of the week and into weekend, bring lots of spring-like conditions too. And then early next week, that high pressure will begin to push up towards Greenland and Iceland. We'll start to try and open the door to those cold northerly winds. It doesn't really come too much. You do get some cold into the far north with GFS midnight rain, but most of the cold air is over Scandinavia and northern Europe. We just introduce low pressure from the Atlantic and bring mild, wetter and windy weather in from off the Atlantic. It's actually been quite unsettled through the first week of April with plenty of low pressure around. 
GFS 6Z. Again, we see the high pressure dominating the weather through the uh, end of week into the weekend. Then that high pressure pushes north, goes further north with the 6Z compared to midnight run becomes a proper northern blocking feature around Greenland Island. It is the kind of thing that you would probably expect following on from these stratospheric developments, I have to say. So it looks plausible, even though it is quite an extreme level of blocking. But we start to pull in these cold northerly winds. They are really cold northerlies as well. By, uh, by month's end. This is 29th of March when we're pushing down a minus 10 Celsius isotherm into the northern half of the country. Looking really cold then. And then heading on uh, beyond that, you know, it stays very cold as well. So minus 10 Celsius isotherm still very north. Certainly cold enough for snow in the northern half of the country as areas of low pressure involved in that. While I'm laid up in hospital, the weather gods will probably start delivering snow. I mean, I had a completely snowless winter and then I go into hospital and in comes <laughs> the snow. You would just... It's just typical, isn't it? Sometimes I do think that the weather gods have got it in for me. I have to say, so... The only time for months and months and months when I might get to do snow watch, I'm in hospital. Uh, anyway, never, <laughs> never mind. We uh, get to day 10, and low pressure is mooching in from off the Atlantic, and that turns it increasingly wet. And in the north, it will be cold still, these north or northeast winds, but most areas will not be that cold, but will have outbreaks of rain. Perhaps another sort of northerly, northeasty bear around the 5th of April. That's how you get to the end of GFS 6Z. Um, so lower pressure, again, is, is having a go at pushing back in from off the Atlantic. The GM is looking like this. Again, we have high pressure dominating weather over the weekend and into the beginning of next week. No particularly cold northerly, though, uh, influence with the GEM. Just breaks high pressure uh, down, sips it southwards and introduces introduce that Atlantic flow. And then the ECM, again, just looks anticyclonic over weekend into next week. And then through the early part of next week, the high pressure goes northwards to Greenland and Iceland. In come these colder winds from the north and the east. Looking properly blocked there. Really, really blocked with the ECM, I have to say. And pulling in cold air from uh, the east and the northeast. Well, minus 5 South Iceland, Shiba Country. All bit minus 10 is being restricted to the far north. But the ECM and, you know, the ECM is hinting at going blocked and cold by the beginning of April, as does some of the GFS output as well. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometcho.com. Just a lot of dry web to come over the uh, next few days. It turns more unsettled around uh, month's end and uh, there's rain. And also, yes, a little bit of snow involved in that while I'm in my hospital bed. There's a snow event going on there. <laughs> Through the Midlands and particularly focused over me, actually. So I'll probably be... In my hospital bed, looking out the window, <laughs> watching it snowing and wishing I was at home and able to do snow watch. Drat. Um, eventually, by day, you couldn't make it up really, could you? By day 10, that low, uh, taking the rain and snow away. And we've got these wintry showers into northern and eastern areas. I don't know. Um, right, this, this is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 1st of April. 51 out of individual members of the ECM ensembles, all of them have low pressure over and to our east and northeast, and in are coming these cold northerly and northeast winds. So, looking pretty cold wintry at day 10 with most of those options. We also have blocking around Greenland and within the northern latitudes. In two weeks' time, this is the option I've got. We lose the blocking. We're still unsettled but lose the blocking so it goes milder wetter and uh, windier as we go on further through the first week you know through the first week of april lastly the cfsc2 these are 500 millibar high on is breaking down into week pairs uh first week pair will take for the 22nd 28th of march the coming week has high pressure dominating weather over the country and so yes another uh, pretty spring-like week to come week two will be the 29th of March to the 4th of April, the top low pressure of Scandinavia. High pressure is blocking around Greenland and down are coming those cold northerly winds, looking rather cold wintry in week two. Week three goes westerly. It's the 5th to the 11th of April with low pressure around Greenland and Iceland, high pressure around Spain and income the westerlies. And then week four returns back to like blocking 12th to the 18th of April with high pressure between Greenland and Scandinavia. Winds probably coming in from an easterly direction with a trough of low pressure over France and Northern. 
different parts of Spain. We'll see about that. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. You actually be able to see future weather content if you do. We, you know, but weather content will be disappearing for a while, uh, for a few weeks, but we'll come back. So uh, give a sub, and uh, I'll get things back on track. I promise you, I will. Um, and uh, and and drop a comment there so without missing all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for, for for doing that, and, and make sure you take friends and family to subscribe as well. Thank you so much. Um, we've we got some content. Some people have checked out, you know, uh, and I'm sorry about that, but there's very little I can do uh, at the moment. You know, I'm very tied up with more important pressing concerns. So I just ask that you know. Please bear with me. Don't check out. Don't unsub. Uh, and and I will get things back on track as quickly as I can. Uh, but obviously, you know, health has to come before anything else. And, uh, and you know, uh, I will get it back on track, though. Uh, right, okay. So, uh, there we go, then. That's it for this uh, video. Not sure when we'll have another video up. But I'll try and get a couple more done, at least, before I go into hospital. But that's it for today's 10 to 14 day. You enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Um, there may be another little video appearing on my uh, vlog later on, you know, uh, with, with latest developments. Uh, so, look out for that if you're interested. Uh, but for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.